nerd soul. Koi Turnbull, I'm a comic book artist, uh, illustrator. I've also uh, worked on storyboards uh, for different uh, companies like uh, Hasbro, um, Disney, uh, just a bunch of different things. But mainly what people know me for is for Marvel, working on uh, Black Panther, um, Wolverine, DC I've worked on, um, Superman, Batman, um, and what I'm really known for is Aspen for Fathom for like 11 issues. I like to draw the action scenes because they're fun, they're energetic, they don't even take long to do. But I tend to get into the subtle scenes as well though, like the conversation between two people. Some people, will, you know, the talking headshots is what they've been termed as. Some people would just have head, head, and that's it. Me, I like to character act. So I like to have like two people, in, two characters rather in one shot. I, don't get me wrong, the headshots are good. But to me, if you're too focused in, you lose, you lose the familiarity, I guess, if you're just here all the time. So I tend to like to see two characters acting it out. And like, particularly when they're just talking, um, when they're talking about something real, uh, between themselves, that is. Um, to me, that's, I, I get into that. So I, I, would I do a romance story? I probably would if the story was good enough. That's, I think, what answered the, the question best, you know? First off, I didn't, look at comics as a, you know, like, what, penciler as a director until I met Brian Stelfreeze. When Stelfreeze put it into my, into my head that yeah. we're directors, Aria we're literally, like you said, choreographing the shots, choreographing not just the, the one single image, but Fair image much. to image to image to make sure that the reader is flowing from one yeah, to the next and want to turn like that page. Them, like the, You're literally directing the eye just, I never to whatever it is that you want the, the viewer to look at. So yeah, we're directors and I take that very seriously because that's the reason why it's hard for me to say I only like to draw um, the, the action oriented scenes. Yeah. Why? Because that's not all that a comic book is. A comic book is the total 22 pages and that means know, if Peter Parker is, is in a romantic moment with uh, Mary Jane or uh, Gwen Stacy. Yeah, I was going to say Gwen Stefani. <laughs> Anyways, but, but Gwen Stacy, you're, as an artist, you have to give that just as much as attention oh, yeah? as Spider-Man beating up Hobgoblin. You have to. So, because if the reader is only interested in just the, um, like I said, the fighting scenes and isn't interested in how it built up to that point, then yeah, as a, as a director, we just, yeah. we, I lost my job, you know? I'm not doing my job. All right, so it's Soul Retriever. And Soul Retriever is basically about uh, a lady who, she dies uh, because of a, uh, an unforeseen accident that actually shouldn't have been an accident, all right? That's about as much as I'll go into it on that particular part. Um, and she, her, she has this power that, was, that has been passed down to every single first male born. And, but it was passed on to her. So she ends up dying before she could pass it to her, her male, her first male, but she never wanted that male to have the power anyway because it comes with a lot of responsibilities and it actually attacks you from the inside. So where we pick up in the story without telling the whole story, we also find out that this power that's residing within her is a galactic power that is that galaxies away. There is a whole kingdom that is going on that this power is almost at, this, at its center. And it's been away yeah. from it for like, like I said, yes, about uh, longer than this earth has been around. So we're gonna connect that power source know, back to, but then, you know, it's, like, you know, to the source itself. And like... by the time we're done with that, we're gonna turn this into a space pirate story. So it's like, it's okay we're gonna get through her origin in the first, excuse me, uh, through her first um, story arc, but then we really take her into that space pirate land, which to me, that's when you can take that into like the my, uh, Spawn. Spawn uh, came out with 300 issues. I would love brother? to touch that one day. His friend, his fiance, if we, her friend, I mean? with this story, we have the opportunity to build something like that. Yeah, so something that's long term. Something that um, people, when they, when they read um, uh, comics in the long run, I hope anyway, one of them will be Soul Retriever. So that's what we're building. It's the world we're building. I think if you grew up reading. Um, any X-Men or any uh, Fantastic Four or any Thor issue, which has these large numbers, right? I grew up reading guys like Mark Silvestri, Barry Windsor Smith, um, um, Walter Simonson, guys who, they were out there every month. Well, maybe not Barry Windsor Smith as much, but the other two guys definitely out there. John Romita Jr., who's also here at this show. To me, these are heroes. And they weren't out there for this one issue, two issues, 
six issues. They were out there for 30 issues at a time. So to me, I'm not certain if, um, if because of the amount of detail that we now put in comics, if we'll ever touch another 300 from one artist, I'm saying. I mean, not even Spawn has one artist on 300 issues, right? But the idea that you could build a world that takes up 300 issues, that's a goal. And I mean, for Todd to, to have met that, and I know he wasn't, I don't think he had it in his mind that he would love to do it, you know, but when it turned out that he could do it, oh man, he got as many artists that he could that can handle a monthly schedule to make it happen. So to me, because of the worlds that me and uh, that Taboo and I are trying to uh, build, we're going to have more than one title. We're have, I have an idea, we have ideas to where we can come up with a whole entire universe. So the only way you can come up with that universe is if you have enough titles coming out. So. I think the drive, to get back to the original question, the drive has to come from within here. It's, that, it's like, it, once you make that decision that that's what you want, no matter how much you know, sidetracking you do, you get right back on it. So that's what, I, that's what we plan on doing. We're creating worlds. At the moment, CoyTurnbull.com, uh, in terms of like website, but you can also find me on uh, Instagram uh, under Coy Turnbull Art. Uh, Facebook, Coy Turnbull. Uh, so I carry like a Twitter as well. Like Twitter, yeah, I didn't think about that one. I don't go in there quite as often. Um, Twitter, I have Twitter as well. So um, you can find me all over. K O I, you know, instead of the C O Y, and Turnbull. I'm finding as I'm getting better as an artist, I, I'm starting to love all of it. I started as strictly pencils. Uh, I still love pencils. I get all of my work through penciling, but I also have an iPad, and. I, when I was in uh, high school and uh, a little bit in college, I hated messing around with the messy paints and all that other good stuff. I loved the, the colors and the finish, but I, I absolutely hated having to clean all that stuff up. The iPad makes it to where it's right here. So yeah, in terms of like, I love digital. I have some images out here that are half digital, half uh, traditional. I think that the, the combination of the two makes for a strong image. but. At times, from time to time, and I have, now that I work in the iPad all the time, I do use uh, Strictly Digital now, you know? Um, but there's nothing, there's nothing that compares to a pencil. So I'll, 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 for the rest of my time anyway, I'll probably combine it two for the rest of my career, you know?